Welcome to our revision summary on fueling vehicles. So first thing we need to consider then is what fuel do cars on the roads today actually use? And we've got two options really. They're either going to be running on petrol or on diesel. Now both of those fuels actually come from the same source. They both come from the fractional distillation of crude oil and crude oil, which we hopefully remember from C1, is a fossil fuel. So what we actually find then in order to actually use this what happens is the fuel is burned in the engine of our car generates heat and that heat is then converted into two types of energy first one is kinetic energy which is going to make the car move and the second is the electrical energy which is going to power the radio and so on now what we do need to bear in mind is that there are problems associated with these fossil fuel burning cars first and foremost is pollution so as those fossil fuels burn we're going to be release, releasing various gases such as carbon dioxide which is going to lead to obviously global warming and things like our sulfur dioxide and nitrous oxides which will lead to acid rain. Second problem we've got there is that we've only got a finite amount of these fossil fuels left so that means they will run out at some point. So we can have an alternative fuel source which is known as a biofuel. Now biofuels are actually made from plants. So what actually happens is as that plant is growing then it's going to be taking in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere during the process of photosynthesis. That carbon dioxide then gets converted into the actual plant's biomass. When we then burn that biofuel later on we will release carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. But the key thing to remember here is that we're not actually releasing any extra carbon dioxide into the atmosphere when we burn that fuel to what we took in when it was growing. So that's described as carbon neutral because the amount of carbon dioxide released when we burn it is the same as the amount we removed from the atmosphere as they grew. Another term we need to understand then is this phrase fuel consumption. Now, quite simply, what that actually refers to is the amount of fuel that our car uses as it's driving. Now, what we normally find is this is measured in miles per gallon or MPG. What we'll find then is if we've got a more efficient car, then it's going to be able to travel a larger distance on that same amount of fuel. Because obviously the more efficient your car is, the less fuel it's going to have to burn to make it travel that same distance. There are, however, several factors that affect the fuel consumption of a vehicle. So the first thing is the actual mass of the car. So if we've got a vehicle with a greater mass, then what we're going to find is it's going to require a greater amount of fuel because what we will need there is a greater amount of energy to actually make the car move. Secondly, we've actually got to consider the forces acting on the car. So if we've got a large amount of these resistive forces, then what we'll find is it will be harder to make that car move. So it's going to require more energy. However, if we make our car more streamlined, it's going to use far less fuel. Third fact then is the speed and the driving style. If you've got a very kind of rapid acceleration, rapid deceleration, then you are going to be burning more fuel than someone who's got a very smooth driving style. And then finally, the road conditions there, if we've got a high friction surface, we're going to then require, obviously, more energy to overcome that friction force, which therefore means more fuel will need to be burnt. Another alternative in terms of our cars is using an electric vehicle. Now, what we find there is that with your electric car, you plug it into the mains, and then the mains electricity is stored in batteries in the vehicle itself. Now, one thing to note is that these electric cars don't produce any pollution at what's called the point of use, i.e. when you're driving the car. However, they will be making pollution during the electricity generation process because electricity is generated in power stations and the vast majority of power stations in use in the UK today are still fossil fuel burning power stations. The other option of car that we could have is a solar powered car. So in this instance, we still have our energy being stored in batteries, but the energy to actually charge them up comes from the sun itself. There are still some problems associated with our solar powered car. First one being that they can only charge up when the sun is shining. 
they will have a limited range and finally we're still going to be making pollution when that car is actually being made obviously we're not going to make any pollution when we're driving it or when we're charging it up but to actually manufacture that car in the first instance we will make some pollution